During World War II, although the performance of rifle grenades was not very eye-catching, as a weapon with a longer range than hand-thrown ammunition, rifle grenades were still widely equipped. In late 1939, the United Kingdom began developing the No. 68 anti-tank rifle grenade as an emergency anti-tank weapon. Like other similar equipment in the UK at that time, the No. 68 was mainly used to defend the homeland and train soldiers and did not play a significant role on the front lines. The early development of shaped charge ammunition technology in the UK had a certain influence on the appearance of the No. 68, perhaps inspired by the Polish campaign. The UK began to strengthen the anti-tank capabilities of infantry. However, it was not easy to popularize anti-tank guns in a short period of time. It was not only constrained by funding and raw materials, but also the production and processing of artillery, as well as the training work after entering the troops, which could not be completed overnight. In comparison, rifle grenades were much simpler, and the UK military committee seemed to be influenced by relevant Swiss experimental work, so they decided to develop anti-tank rifle grenades on their own. The No. 68 anti-tank rifle grenade is a type of ammunition that can be fired from a modified Lee-Enfield rifle. The projectile has a cylindrical shape, with a flat front end instead of the conventional conical shape of a shell. Inside the cylinder is a metal cone-shaped cover and explosive material, which uses the explosive energy to generate a forward metal jet to penetrate tank armor. Behind the warhead is a cylindrical structure with a reduced diameter, which contains a safety pin and an inertia-driven firing pin. Further back are the stabilizing fins of the ammunition. The projectile has a diameter of 2.5 inches, a total length of 7 inches, and weighs 894 grams. Most of the rifles modified to accept rifle grenades were firearms in poor condition. They were labeled DP, meaning training rifles. A short barrel that can accommodate the number 68 was installed at the muzzle, and high explosive rounds were fired. When used, the shooter needs to remove the safety pin of the ammunition. After firing, the internal firing pin remains in the rear position. When the ammunition stops moving after hitting the target, the firing pin continues to move forward due to inertia. Without the obstruction of the safety pin, it pierces the thin metal skin and triggers the detonator, thereby detonating the ammunition. Due to the fact that the projectile itself does not conform to aerodynamics, coupled with some defects of the rifle grenade itself, the effective firing range of the No. 68 anti-tank rifle grenade is 50 meters for direct aiming. The projectile needs to hit the target at an almost vertical angle to be effective, which is about 15 degrees on each side of the vertical angle. The metal jet of the warhead can penetrate 52 millimeter or thick steel armor. Once the angle of impact is too large, the metal jet cannot exert its maximum effect on the armor, thus losing its armor-piercing ability. The No. 68 anti-tank rifle grenade officially entered service in November 1940. The fact proved that its effectiveness was even inferior to that of anti-tank rifles, so it mainly remained in the UK to fulfill defense and training tasks. Because the design of the ammunition was mainly for anti-armor purposes, the explosive killing effect of the projectile was also not ideal, and it could not be used against infantry. Nevertheless, from 1940 to 1944, the UK still produced about 8 million rounds of ammunition. It is said that during the Battle of France, about 10,000 rounds of ammunition were sent to the front lines. But this batch of ammunition hardly had any effect and it is difficult to find records of its use. Perhaps only a few frontline soldiers knew how to use it. In addition, the United States and Canada also joined the production, but the quantity produced by these two countries was relatively small. Throughout World War II, in order to strengthen the possible counter-landing operations, the UK successively developed many anti-tank weapons with a middle school nature. The No. 68 anti-tank rifle grenade was just one of them, but it was basically another toy for the local defense forces, and it was essentially a waste of resources. 